Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys, we have a small little uh, mail call that we are going to be doing today. Uh, not a lot of stuff actually, but we have a couple things that I am working on. I don't know if any of the decks necessarily came in the mail today, but we have a lot of things that we're slowly working on. So I hope you guys can all sit back and enjoy this video. Uh, thank you guys for the support. Otherwise, we could not continue to do the these type of videos right now. I am really on some hard times, but things are slowly getting better. So, thank you guys for the continuous support. So, yes, um, the first thing you see we got here, this is for a new card that recently came out of Battles of Legend. Um, I tried to pick these up, but people were getting rid of them for around seven to eight dollars. I was like, okay, I looked online. It was cheaper to get online. So, I picked them up online and that is super quantum great magnus this goes with the super dreadnought if you guys don't know the combos that you can do to bring this bad boy out pretty easy to do uh, it just takes a little bit of setup as you guys should know but yeah uh, i was waiting for the price to go down a little bit before i did it sorry about that but yeah oh, my bad i had to do something quickly <laughs> i dropped something on the floor i had to pick it up Let's see here what the next thing we have. Ah, oh, okay. So this, we may build this deck. I was talking to a friend last night at Locals about, hey, what do you think of this deck? And he's like, y you know, it's not a, it looks like a fun deck to play. I don't know how good it would be, but it's just like, you know, one of those type of decks that you're like, yeah, let's just build it because and see how it goes. There's been a lot of like decks like that throughout Yu-Gi-Oh's history that I'm like, it's a pretty cheap deck to build, you know, but I want to play it because it looks kind of interesting. Uh, that... I'll never forget the one time that happened with me with Battling Boxers, if anybody remembers of that archetype. Super cheap. Uh, and then I read, you know, one day somebody was, um, you know, I was looking through rares, like right after Lord of the Techian Galaxy came out, because everybody was looking for the uh, Dragon Ruler stuff and Drago Sack and all that stuff. And some people wanted Harpies, and I was looking at Harpy stuff, and I was just opened a pack, and I saw Lead Yoke in it. And I was like, let me read this card. And I read it, and I was like, oh, <laughs> this card's pretty good. And then I figured out how easy it was to get him out, and uh, I built the deck. And I still have the deck. I haven't played it in a long time, but we may rebuild it one day, um, revisit it. I have the deck core and everything in sleeves and everything. I just haven't built the deck in a while. So the same thing goes with the com uh, Combat Star cards, uh, the fusions and whatnot. We may build a deck around these eventually, but I also picked up another play set of Strike. Uh, the reason for this is because I have so many different decks, and it's super, super cheap to get. You know, I'm picking these up for two dollars, and I have I, a friend gave me another Strike last night, so it's just an easy pickup. So I can just put them in different deck profiles. I don't have to keep swapping things out, and it makes videos that much more easier to film. Uh, especially for what I'm trying to do in the future by making, you know, uh, some more interesting dual videos eventually when things settle down for me. Um, it's going to make things easier by having multiples of good staple cards that for the foreseeable future will always be good cards. Like Solemn Strike, it's like all the other Solemn cards. Uh, yes, we don't want a lot of background nowadays, but does that mean that it's necessarily a bad card? No. Will it always have some type of utility? Yes, especially if you're going first. So, And most decks nowadays like going first uh, for the most part. So game one you can put it in and then game two you can side it out or you know, depend upon, you can keep it in your side deck depending upon if you know you're gonna, in game two and three you're going to go first. Uh, it's not as good anymore because of the time ruling, but if you're just playing with fun with your friends and you're just recording videos, well, heck yeah, Solemn Strike is an amazing card still. So yeah. Next we have Altergeist Hexia. This is for my Altergeist deck. I just wanted the uh, different card text change. Same thing with the star, um, the Earth Star. We may build this eventually. Uh, more of the combat Earth Star cards, as you can see. We got some more pre-preparation of rights because there's always good ritual decks coming out, and you know always can use these uh, and more uh, the star cards, as you can see there. So just just more little things here and there that we're working on and building, you know. Nothing fancy, just some more little cheap stuff from Battles of Legend. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Now this is something interesting I picked up, and people are going to ask me, Seto, 
why'd you pick these up? I'm kind of confused as to why you picked these cards up specifically. And um, there's a reason. Uh, as I'm looking through something right now, I'm just making sure I can show you guys. Now I don't have it on me at the moment. But there's a reason why I picked these cards up. Uh, there's a deck that everybody hates that I've wanted to build ever since this card came out. And I said to myself, when this card got a reprint eventually, whenever that was, I said, I will build this deck. So throughout the past couple of years, I've been slowly picking up cards here and there. Um, and, of, you know, just when I see in bulk, in trade, wherever I can find them. And uh, then this card got announced as a reprint. And I said, oh, I guess it's time. And that's Dark Lord, Ixtap. But if you guys are familiar with my channel, you guys know all, I already play Dark Lord. So why would I need the other, another playset of Ixtab? Oh, what's that other deck that people play but they hate? I mentioned that, that people hate it. Oh, yes. Nurse Burn. Yes, we're going to build Nurse Burn. Hate me. Hate me all you want. I've been wanting to build Nurse Burn for the last three years. Since this card originally came out and it got its own rota and everything, I said, I'm going to wait until it gets cheaper because this was like a $20 card. I'm not going to pick a second place it up. I mean, I played around with it one time and people hated me for playing it, but I've been wanting to build it for quite some time. And now it seems like it's about time to do it because it's cheap. They're like two bucks. Pick it up. Play it. Now this... Is something I've been putting off for many, many moons as well. Um, and it looks like one of them came in the mail today, which makes me happy. So, as you guys know and should know on this channel, my favorite deck of all time is Gravekeepers. And Gravekeepers just recently got, we don't know the effects yet at the time of me making this video, uh, but we do have Gravekeeper support coming out soon. And, you know, there's different Gravekeeper cards that have aged well and not aged well. But there are certain Gravekeeper cards that will always be good in Gravekeepers. One of those is Gravekeeper's Recruiter. Now, I already ha had one Hollow Recruiter I had picked up in a trade years ago. But this card had retained like an $8 value to $10 value for the longest of times. And then eventually I started noticing it was going down in price. And I said, okay, I'll just keep an eye out for it and get it in a trade or uh, something of that nature. Um, and then the night I was looking at cards and then I heard somebody texted me and said, Seto, Gravekeepers are getting support. And I said, what? And then I saw that it was real, but we don't know the effects. And so automatically I was like, okay, buy my other two recruiters right now from Legendary Collection Yugi's World because the entire rest of the deck that I have is already hollow. And I was just using the two rares from Star Strike Blast. Thank gosh, because as soon as I, I got these for $3, um, near mint and the next morning I wake up like a day or so later I look up the price and it shot up to eight dollars nine dollars again and I was like yeah because out of all the gravekeeper stuff even if they make a new spy even if they make a new descendant and heretic and assailant and whatever have you this one card will probably be used in the deck no matter what no matter what because it's a searcher it floats like it's good um, so <laughs> No matter what, I could see that card being used in all Gravekeeper decks for the foreseeable future. It's one of those type of like staple cards along with Commandant that works with Necro Valley. It will always be good. It will always be played in the deck as far as I can think of any way they try to build the deck. So, yeah. Uh, next up, we have some more just fun little cards we picked up. Uh, we have uh, Performer Pal Trick Clown. I picked some of these up recently. Uh, some of the little wing dragon guys I picked up for a deck I want to play around with with dragons uh, so that's why you see these uh, glorious numerons and some foolish burials because I just picked up foolish burials because but this right here the main reason I picked this up and the main reason I picked the trickstar uh, cards up the trickstar performer pow cards up uh, is because we are building another deck which it doesn't look like we're going to get the rest of the cards today which makes sense uh, but the card, the deck I'm trying to build as well is Utopia. Uh, it's the off season. I'm saving up my money for Cybernetic Horizon. I'm saving up my money for you know Valkyries, but uh, I've spent about fifty dollars of my own money uh, with my paycheck. About fifty, about a hundred, I would say, more more around like seventy five to eighty five now, I guess, of uh, just building uh, some cheap decks online. So like um, 
the, the, the freaking Utopia deck is like one of the last decks that I'm building uh, that's an old school deck that I've wanted to build for a long time. And then I was like, well, you know, Nurse Burn got reprinted, Ixtab got reprinted, let's pick that up and just build that deck cheaply. So I dropped about, I think, $10 on Nurse Burn because I had everything else. I just needed like a, an extra gift card and like some other random stuff. Um, and then like the Utopia deck, I had a lot of that already. So that cost me like 20 bucks to build. Like, cause uh, Lightning got reprinted and then they had the ultimate printing. So the price had gone down a lot. So that cost me like 30 bucks to build. And then like, I just got some card sleeves, a, a bulk of card sleeves. So that was about $20 for like uh, 20 pack, like 10 packs of card sleeves, um, which is a pretty good deal actually. And so I just like, yeah, it adds up, but um, it's stuff that I'm trying to build for you guys and that stuff. It's, it's some of like, I've gotten to the point in my Yu-Gi-Oh career, um, which literally I look at a deck, I look at decks that I want to build and I look at, you know, because Konami's always coming out with this legacy support. So um, what happens is, I noticed, is Konami's always coming out with legacy support. So even older decks are still viable five years later. Uh, they get new support, become a little bit more viable, come, become a little bit more good. And a lot of um, fan-made decks or character decks have been getting reprinted, you know, more and more and more and more. And I've been thinking, you know, like, what character decks do I really want to build, like, for like just some fun duels with my friends or playing overall. So as old school decks go, as I end this little rant here, there's really not that many I want to build anymore. I think I've built them all. The only one I would ever build, but we need either Needle Fiber to come out, which it probably will, or some other plant cards to come out, but an archetype based around Akiza, my loveliness, um, I would build that in a heartbeat. But we really don't have any, like, she just played plants. She didn't play, like, an archetype. Um, and as old school decks go, I have everything already built. Like, I already have the cores of everything. Uh, so there's really, it's getting to the point where, like, you know, the, the, the Dragons of Legend set, the, uh, the, dra uh, the, the special edition coming out at the end of the year, you know what, Phantom Knights, okay, that's cheap to build. I already had all the hollers, like everything got reprinted so I could just holler it out for 10 bucks. And then the DD stuff, I already had a lot of that. That cost me like 10 bucks to holler out because I got all the stuff already. So like, it was like, cool, cool. But it was like, there's really no like, I got, I want to build this. I've been waiting a long time. I've been saving up money and I've put it off long enough and things have gotten a lot cheaper. Build it now type of decks. You know what I mean? Like, we've built so many fun decks over the years. <laughs> Gods, uh, Earthbound, Sphinx dot deck. We Now we just maintain the decks and build new decks as they come out. So now we don't have to go back and spend a bunch of money. I think the last deck that I'm working on like that is Neospatians. And after that, I can't think of anything else. Like from GX or 5Ds and then Zexal onwards. I've already got all those decks built pretty much. You know, like battling boxes. If they ever got new support, we got support already for it. So, yeah. We already got the cards for it, excuse me. But yeah, uh, this is a cool card that's pretty good that I picked up. I'm picking these up slowly. Torrential Tributes, we also got a bunch of these because there's a lot of older decks that can run Torrential Tribute and a lot of decks that I want to run Torrential in because now it's at three of. And now I saw a hollow reprint, so I'm picking them up for goat decks and just a, a multitude of different decks to hollow them out instead of playing commons, which I've been playing... For a long time, I was—I mean, I have my old hollows, but they're from like Labyrinth of Nightmare, and I'm kind of like putting—I have them in Goat. So all my other versions of the decks, you know, there hasn't been a good, cheap, hollow reprint of Torrential in quite some time. Foolish Bear Belongings, I always like it. I picked up just a playset of Duelist Alliance because they were a dollar, and it's just good to always have these. I picked up three bottomless trap holes. The reason I picked this up is for trap tricks. I want to hollow the bottomlesses out because, you know, they're just, it's super cheap. It's cheap, good, good-looking hollows. So that's why we got them. So I hope you guys all enjoy this video. We're working on a couple decks. Um, probably by the time you've seen this video, you've already probably seen the, you'll be seen or have already seen the Castle of Stromberg deck, uh, a.k.a. Fairy Tale. Um, uh, Utopia deck should be out within a couple of weeks. Um, Nurse Burn should be out in a couple of weeks. Um, other decks that we're working on currently at the moment. Uh, other decks that we're going to be building in the future as long as they're not like uber expensive. The De New Demise dot deck, Cyber Dragons, 
Nordics, everything out of that little set there. Nordics, you know, Cyber Dragons, D Heroes, all that stuff. We're going to build that. We already have everything. Um, Neospatians and stuff, but that's down the road. Uh, Valkyries, we are definitely going to 100% build. People are asking me, even if that's expensive, you guys and my Patreons especially have been very generous to me and I've been saving up my Patreon money just to buy Val Valkyries. And also, I'll probably use some of it for buying the Danger Archetype when that comes out. So, money is being saved up over the last two to three months already for these future Archetypes coming out so I don't have to break the bank and go bankrupt. I'm not going to be breaking the bank, but you know what I'm trying to say. My wallet cannot take a, as big of a hit. So, we've been doing pretty good. We've been investing and biding our time. So, after that long talk there, thank you all for the support. I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.